So now I just need to calculate displacements for my compatibility equation so I can plug and chug and solve for unknowns. And the first structure I'm gonna look at is that primary loading structure or this stru statically determinate cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load. And what I need to do is calculate the displacements at V0 at three meters and V0 at six meters right here at, at the middle and at the end of the cantilever beam. And I can choose any approach that I want if I've got charts, I can use the charts. I'm going to go ahead and use double integration just to demonstrate double integration method for you here. So boom, so I'm going to calculate displacements and I'm going to start with the primary structure and I can reset up this problem, you know, in a way it's just a whole nother basic double integration problem and I'm given geometry and loading with constant flexural rigidity. And what I want to do is find the displacements at V0 of three meters and V0 at six meters. And I'm going to go ahead and use a double integration method. And so here's my free body diagram. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for the reactions. And here, let's see, I've got six times six. That's 36 kilonewtons resultant here. So my if I do some of the forces in the vertical, I know I'm kind of going through this fast, but hopefully this isn't too, this isn't brand new for you. 36 kilonewtons going down. So that means I have a 36 kilonewton reaction going up here. And if I sum moments, I have the resultant 36 times three, which is 108 kilonewton meters going like this. So my reaction here will be 108 kilonewton meters like this. All right. And let's see, my only discontinuities in this problem are at the beginning and the end of the cantilever here. So I just need one cut to describe this moment function. So I'll just make a cut here. And let's see here. So I make that cut. I'm going to draw a free body diagram of that cut. And then I just need to apply equilibrium so I can come up with the moment functions. And if I sum moments about the cut, this is the resultant of the distributed load times the arm, which would be X over two, plus the moment reaction at the end, the 108 kilonewton meters minus 36 kilonewtons times X equal to zero. And that will tell me my moment function M zero is equal to and this is my moment function. And from the double integration method, if you remember the double integration method, you have to integrate twice of the moment function to get to displacement. And in fact, you might remember that V of X is the double integral M over EI dx. All right, so that's what probably what you remember from the double integration method. And so if I, I have to integrate twice, so if I take an antiderivative of this, the slope theta of x is one over ei, I'll call it theta zero, is equal to one over ei, the integral of this, and that's my slope function, and then one more for the displacement function. And there you go. And now I gotta solve for the constants associated with the open integrals. So I need my boundary conditions to get my constants. And here in this case, the boundary conditions are pretty simple. I have a fixed end here at the beginning or at A. So when at X equals zero, the displacement at zero is zero and the slope at zero equals zero. And that will tell me when I plug and chug, that will actually tell me that, let's see here, if I use this relationship, relationship. So if I plug in zero for all the X's here, that'll tell me C2 equals zero. And when I plug in zero here for the slope relationship, this will tell me that C1 equals zero. Bam. And now to get the actual slope and deflection at the points that I want. Again, remember I wanted the displacement at three meters and at six meters. And so I just need to plug and chug. And when I solve this all out, I get negative 344.25 kilonewton meter cubed over EI. And that is my displacement at three meters. The negative means it goes down. Yay. All right. And then I do the same for V0 at six meters. And hopefully you get and I get the same thing. Kilonewton meter cubed over EI. Done. All right, so that, if I go back to my compatibility equation, that means I've solved this one and this one. Four more to go. 
Yes! All right, so now that we've calculated the displacements for the primary loading, we want to go ahead and calculate displacements for each of the redundants. And that means for us, we're going to start by looking at redundant one here. So I need to calculate the displacements for this redundant one at three meters and at six meters. And for me to do that, I'll just use the conjugate beam method. But I could use the double integration method again as well. So for this, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and draw my free body diagram with the loading, solve for reactions, and then draw the shear moment diagram, which, are, which is a bunch of basic static stuff. So here's my structure. Here's this redundant load X1 that's applied. And if I go ahead and I solve for reactions, I'll just get a vertical reaction pointing downwards here of X1. And my moment reaction knowing that this distance is three meters, would be x1 times three meters this way. Bam, done. And now I just want to draw my shear and moment diagrams associated with this loading. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that process, vertical lines at discontinuities, which I like to do. And I'm going to start by going down x1, negative x1 here. My loading is zero, so I'm constant. And then I go up to zero, and this rest of this curve is zero. So there's my shear diagram and my moment diagram. I have this x1 times 3 meters going, what is this, clockwise. But in general, I draw it on the left side of the dot, and so it's pointing up. So I'm going up. So boom, right here. Call that x1 times 3 meters. And let's see here, the area under the, the, the shear diagram here is x1 times 3. So this is negative 3 meters times x1. So that means I'm going to change this area, which is to 0 right here. And because this is constant, I expect my graph here to be linear. And my moment diagram looks like this. Boom! And that's it. And now, if I want to use or apply the conjugate beam method, I am going to turn this beam into its conjugate equivalent. So if I have a fixed end in the real structure, in my conjugate structure, it would be free. And then I've got nothing happening here, no sort of supports or hinges or anything. And then at this end right here, I have a free end in my real beam. And so in my conjugate beam, it will be fixed. And this is what my conjugate beam looks like. And I will call this point A prime and this C prime right here. And now for my conjugate loading, I would convert this into a curvature diagram. And because the flexural rigidity EI is constant, all I got to do is divide this thing by EI. And really, since I, all I got to do is divide by EI, and all these values would be divided by EI. So my, my curvature diagram looks exactly my, like my moment diagram, except for my values are divided by EI. And so this is my, con my moment diagram or my curvature diagram. And my conjugate loading is going to have that exact same shape. My conjugate loading is linear, just like that moment diagram right here. And all because I have positive curvature, in my conjugate beam, my loading is upwards. And the value of this distributed load right here, this value is x1 times 3 meters over ei. And now all I have to do is basic statics to get my displacement here and here. And so that means I just need the internal loading at this point and this point, at 3 meters and 6 meters from the left. And all in order for me to do that, I just got to do more basic statics and dissolve internal loading of my conjugate beam. And the first point I will do is this location right here. So I will make a cut, boom, and I will draw the left side of my free body diagram. So here's my free body diagram to my point right here, B prime, which is at three meters. And I want to find the displacement at this location, which means that I need the internal moment in the conjugate beam here, and my internal loading in the conjugate beam, I will say here at the face of the cut, is just like any other cut in internal loading convention, VB prime, MB prime. And again, one more time, the moment, the internal moment associated with the conjugate beam corresponds with the displacement of the, con of the real beam. And so I just need to solve for moments here or make some moments about the cut. And that equilibrium equation is going to involve a resultant of this distributed loading, 
which I will use purple. And here, the resultant here is the area or one half base times height. And the location of that arm is right here, this distance. And the centroid of a triangle is two thirds from the, the zero side. So two thirds times three meters, which will be two meters. And so my, mo my moment equation here will involve a negative one half x1 nine meters squared times the arm of two meters plus mb prime. And that tells me mb prime is equal to nine meters cubed times x1. And this is my displacement of my redundant loading one or my first redundant structure at three meters. And this is the displacement of, and this is a displacement at three meters for my redundant structure associated with my first redundant loading. Now to, to get the displacement at six meters, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a cut right here and draw the free body diagram on the left side. And again, this structure looks like this. And here, the internal loading of the conjugate beam that I'm solving for is this VC prime and MC prime. And because I only need the displacement, again, I'm just gonna solve for the moment. So I'm gonna take moments about the cut again. And just to test yourself, you know, what I would do right now is maybe pause and see if you get the same thing that I would get before you see the next like five seconds of this video. You know what I'm saying? Practice. So here's the resultant, the area, and the arm this time is, is gonna be the, that two meters plus that three. So this will be five meters. All of this equal to zero. And I, when I work this out, I should get an MC prime. And this is my displacement of my redundant one structure at six meters. And I'm gonna take these two bubble displacements and put them into my compatibility equation way up here, boom. And boom, Woo. four down, two to go. All I need is the displacements at three meters and six meters associated with redundant loading two. 